Hello and well, welcome to this talk. Now let me quickly give you the bottom line on this video so you can decide if you want to watch. But in Korea, they've done a large-scale study and they've found an increased incidence of transverse myelitis after COVID-19 vaccination. Now this is in addition to the long line of other side effects that we already know about, the pericarditis, the myocarditis, the blood clots, the low platelets, the peripheral nervous system problems, the brain problems, and now we know that there's a very likely to be a spinal cord problem as well, at least a strong association. So more transverse myelitis after COVID vaccine in South Korea. Why does this matter? Two main reasons. Well, three, well, many reasons. One is the people affected, of course. That's tragic. Um, and we know that lesions of the spinal cord can be result in permanent uh, paralysis and sensory loss. The other reason is COVID vaccines are still being given. I know. Perhaps the most important reason, though, is other messenger ribonucleic acid vaccines are being developed. The RSV one, for example, is already in use and many others are in the pipeline. I think there should be a monitorium on messenger ribonucleic acid vaccines until we know much more about the adverse reactions from the COVID vaccine, which was the first mRNA vaccine. And of course, adenovirus vector vaccines were also used for COVID, as we'll see. Now, this is the paper here from the European Journal of Neurology. It's in the public domain and is actually pretty readable for a scientific paper if you want to delve in a little deeper. Now, um, they do notice here that acute transverse myelitis has been reported as a potential association between COVID-19 vaccination. So the association has been noted before, but this is the first time to quantify it. 368 cases of acute transverse myelitis cases diagnosed after the first COVID-19 vaccine in the study period, and the 159 patients were followed up. Pretty well equal male and female. And overall, they found that the incident rate ratio was 2.41. In other words, uh, two and a half times more likely to develop transverse myelitis. And that was in a 42-day uh, follow-up period. And they do give the precise breakdowns for the different vaccines, which is quite uh, interesting. So what they found was the incident rate ratio. The incidence, of course, is the number of new cases. Uh 3.3% more, 3.3 3 .3 times more likely for the Oxford AstraZeneca type vaccine. Just under two times more likely for the Pfizer. Two and just over two and a half times more likely for the Moderna. And 3.3 for the uh, Janssen one, which of course is another adenovirus vector type vaccine. Now, I just want to show you why transverse myelitis is important. Let's imagine that this is the brain here. That's the brain on top in the skull. And then we have the, uh, the spinal cord. Now, the spinal cord is more or less continuous with the brain. And the spinal cord communicates with the body via 31 pairs of spinal nerves. So these are coming out here and these are communicating with all parts of the body. And these ones go down to the lower parts of the body uh, as well. As you know well, if you've ever suffered from sciatica, now, transverse myelitis. Myelitis is inflammation of the spinal cord. And of course, transverse means across the way. So this is something that affects the spinal cord across the way like that. It's transverse and it can be at any level um, of the spinal cord. It could even be right high up in the spinal cord, which is particularly serious. So let's suppose it's at this level here. This is the transverse myelitis area here. Now, what this means is that sensory inputs coming up from the sensory nerves can get up the spinal cord but then they get stuck there so they can't get to the brain that means parts of the body can't be felt there's a sensory loss and of course motor impulses that are generated in the in the brain they can get down to where the lesion is but then they can't get past it so you have paralysis and motor loss distal to the lesion and as well as affecting the uh, voluntary nervous system it also affects the autonomic nervous system as well. So you can get things like incontinence and 
sexual uh, dysfunction. So there we see quite, um, well, qu quite significant levels of risk. The adenovirus vector vaccines being the worst, but quite significant risk there for the Moderna, two and a half times more likely to occur in the 42 days after a vaccine is given. And actually, um, there was a slightly greater risk with every subsequent vaccine as well that they did notice. So somewhat more people developing transverse myelitis after a second and third vaccine dose. Now, let's look at a little more detail for those of you that are interested. Uh, it's a self-controlled case series. Now, this is largely about when rather than who, because uh, basically in South Korea, so many of the population have been vaccinated uh, it was difficult to find a, an adequate control. So they compared people against themselves just at different time periods. It's a well-recognised uh, methodology in epidemiology. And in North Korea, available, <laughs> uh, South Korea rather, not North Korea, we know nothing about North Korea, a uh, large database that combines the COVID-19 vaccine registry and the national claims database. Now, so they know who's had the COVID vaccine. So uh, data... Information on individuals aged 18 plus who received COVID-19 vaccine. And it's the period here is from uh, February uh, 2021 through to August 2022. So about an 18-month period. Pretty good period, really. Uh, patients who developed acute transverse, transverse myelitis, they basically claimed for healthcare systems. So basically they knew who was vaccinated, they knew who claimed for healthcare provision. And that basically tells you the incidence of the uh, transverse myelitis. So, and the claims beta database covered the entire Korean population, so it's not a sample, it's the entire population. Patients who developed ATM acute transverse myelitis within one to 42 days following the vaccination, and most were in the earlier stages of this period. And the observation period was 270 days after the first dose of the vaccine, so the observation period carried on for some time. Now, their conclusion was these findings indicate an increased risk of acute transverse myelitis following COVID-19 vaccination within 42 days after vaccine. An association with the risk of acute transverse myelitis was found with both viral vector and mRNA vaccines. And of course, the mRNA vaccines are the ones we're plowing ahead with. Um, the adenovirus vector ones, fortunately, have been well and truly put on the shelf, at least for now. So acute transverse, my, my, transverse myelitis, it's a relatively rare neurological disorder. Inflammation of the spinal cord, as we've pointed out, can lead to sensory motor deficits, paralysis, severe disability, autonomic loss below the level of the lesion. And this is, this is true with all spinal cord lesions. So when you're dealing with spinal cord injuries, the key level is to know what level the lesion is at. If it's high up, a cervical lesion is more serious than one lower down. But of course, they can all result in paralysis and sensory loss below the level of the lesion. So, um, yeah, not, not, not a good thing to happen at all, as in any spinal injury. The causes of um, ATM are uncertain. However, it is known to be associated with autoimmunity triggered by various environmental factors, including vaccination. So vaccination is a known risk. Now, in their discussion, they say uh, this nationwide population based uh, self-controlled case series study <laughs> identified a significant increase in the incidence of acute transverse myelitis within one to 42 days. So this is a significant, statistically significant increase. Our findings contribute to the ongoing debate on the safety profiles of COVID-19 vaccines by providing evidence of potential neurological complications. So speaking in reserved scientific terms here which of course is good the pathogenesis how the disease begins of transverse myelitis appears to be immune mediated from infection parrot infection uh, and autoimmune disease post-vaccination transverse myelitis may be associated with various types of immune pathways including autoimmunity 
So basically, there's a lot of ways in which this could happen. Plenty plausible mechanisms of action. It's generally accepted that post-vaccine central nervous system demyelination occurs seven days post-vaccination. So very occurring early in the 42-day uh, period. Now, a lot of these conditions are myelin-related. So what I've got here, if, this is from my physiology book. You can download it. I'll put the link. But these are the myelin sheaths here around the nerve fibres. Now, this is actually a peripheral motor nerve fibre, but this is the myelin sheath here around about it. Surrounds, protects, insulates, facilitates rapid tran transduction, transmission rather of um, the impulses. Now, in the peripheral nervous system, the uh, myelin sheath is made of uh, cells called Schwann cells. In the central nervous system, the spinal cord, it's another type of cell called oligodendrocytes, but it's the same idea. It's the insulation around the nervous tissue, which is often, often uh, damaged. That's the pathology in multiple sclerosis, for example. It's damaged to the myelin sheath in the central nervous system. In the case of mRNA-based COVID-19 vaccines, an immunological reaction between SARS-CoV spike protein and uh, antibodies and tissue proteins may contribute to the development, development of demyelinating autoimmune disease. So plausible mechanisms, plausible mechanisms. Um, previous literature has not drawn conclusions as clear as our findings, mostly because earlier studies relied on voluntary adverse events reporting. So they were able to look at all of the cases of transverse myelitis in South Korea. They weren't dependent on reporting. And we know that um, countries such as the UK and the United States, we know that adverse events are grossly uh, under-reported. So this is a much more realistic snapshot that we're getting from uh, South Korea. So the under-reporting, not so much of a problem there. We don't have the bias that we get from databases such as the US and the, um, the UK. Our analysis benefits from South Korea's robust healthcare infrastructure, which boasts a high density of MRI machines, which is important. Now, the, the, uh, the way that transverse myelitis is diagnosed, it's partly by a lumbar puncture, where you would see inflammatory cells in the cerebrospinal fluid, but also by MRI. And in MRI, they've got lots of, uh, in, in South Korea, they've got lots, lots of MRI machines. So diagnostic facilities are much more readily uh, available. This could potentially explain some of the discrepancies observed between our results and those from studies conducted in other settings. The conclusion, our findings indicate the increased risk of acute transverse myelitis following COVID-19 vaccination, regardless of whether it is a viral vector or an mRNA vaccine. So both types of vaccine have an increased risk and doctors should exercise caution regarding the possibility of acute transverse myelitis following a vaccination. Now, I'm not going to do this in detail, but just quickly running through a few other studies to show this is an emerging pattern. Neurological complications after the first dose of COVID-19 vaccine and sars coronavirus 2 infection. That's the reference there, this paper. Emerging reports of rare neurological complications associated with COVID-19 uh, infection and vaccination are leading to regulatory clinical and public health concerns. Now, I think this paper was 2021, so I don't think much has changed, really. Uh, another paper, acute transverse myelitis after COVID-19 vaccination. Uh, this paper here, that's the reference. Uh, the adverse effects of COVID-19 vaccination have been dis uh, discovered as the rapid application of Vaccines continues. Neurological complications such as transverse myelitis raised concerns as cases were observed in clinical trials. But of course, the clinical trials weren't stopped. A member of a case was found in the clinical trial uh, for the Oxford vaccine, I think it was, and the, the trial was stopped in the UK, but not for long, then it was just started again. Very strange. Um, perhaps an over-willingness to write off potential adverse effects and now there's an indication that that could have been a causal effect of course this is an association but the association is strong and now well studied at least in south korea overview of transverse myelitis after covid vaccination 
uh, this paper until uh, January the 16th, 2023. The Netherlands Pharmacovigilance Centre reported 48 c- cases of transverse myelitis following COVID vaccination. So in the Netherlands, it's there as well. Um, neurological side effects of COVID-19 vaccination. The most frequent neurological side effects of SARS-CoV vaccines are headache, Guillain-Barre syndrome, venous sinus thrombosis and transverse myelitis. So again, coming up in other studies. A systematic review of cases following CNSD myelination, following vaccination. Again, majority of cases. This is interesting. 71% occurred after the first vaccine dose in this paper, whereas more cases actually occurred in subsequent vaccine doses in the career study. But neurological symptoms manifesting after a medium of nine days, that is consistent in the first 42 days, typically within the first week or so. The most common reported presentation was transverse myelitis in that study. And even the World Health Organization study, although the paper's very nuanced, um, transverse myelitis following sars cov through vaccination, a pharmacoepidemiological study in the World Health Organization uh, database, transverse myelitis was significantly associated both with messenger ribonucleic acid, mRNA, and uh, viral vector, sars coronavirus 2 vaccines that are author- authorised by the FDA and the uh, European Medicines Agency. So another reason I would have thought to pause the uh, use of mRNA vaccines, but that's just me, let me know what you think. So transverse myelitis, less common but now good associations demonstrated, less common than things like pericarditis, myocarditis, but uh, significant because of the potential for long-term disability. Pity that all of these factories to develop new mRNA, new mRNA vaccines seem to be going ahead full, full steam. Um, Let's hope the products are not associated with any of the adverse reactions of the COVID vaccines. But they may well be. How many people are going to have to be injected before we find out? Thank you for watching.